Namo tassa pegawato arahato samma sambudassa Namo tassa pegawato arahato samma sambudassa Namo tassa pegawato arahato samma sambudassa Welcome to this Dhamma talk and discussion. Uh, I'm not too sure if I've met you, Crash, or you, Kai, Kairi, um, so I'll give an introduction. Uh, my name is Jayantha, formerly known here as Ferox. I've been with the Buddha Center a year and a half. I'm a 34-year-old lay Buddhist disciple of the Theravada tradition. Uh, and what that means is I'm not a monk or a master or guru or anything like that. I'm just a regular Buddhist disciple on his path. And what we do here every Tuesday at this time is a Dhamma talk and discussion. If you're familiar with Dhamma talks by monks... Uh, you understand the, you know how it works. Uh, the only difference is it's traditional uh, with monks to hold your questions or your comments to the end. Um, with me, uh, since I'm not a monk and since I like it better the opposite way, um, if you have any comments or questions throughout the whole length of the talk and and afterwards, you can always feel free to make a comment or a question um, while we're talking. Some of the best Dhamma talks uh, here uh, have been actually Dhamma discussions when everybody starts to ask questions and to comment and to talk. So never feel fear about doing that. <clears throat> and today, since uh, I haven't done a talk on fear in a long time and since I had a lot of um, a lot of meditation or uh, observance of fear this weekend, I figured I'd go with fear. Now, fear is something that we're all familiar with, um, but obviously since we're doing a Dhamma talk, it's, we're going to go directly to the suttas and we're going to speak about fear and Buddhism. One of the things that attracted me to Buddhism was the concept of fearlessness. The Arahants have no fear. And you wonder, well, why? How the heck do they have no fear? What's going on there? <laughs> There's a, um, and here it is, this quote right here. There is no fear for an awakened one whose mind is not sodden by lust, nor afflicted by hate, and who has gone beyond both merit and demerit. There is no fear for the awakened one. And there is, uh, in the Majimana Nikaya, number five, or I'm sorry, wrong, number four is called Fear and Dread. And this uh, fits quite well because in this uh, sutta, the Buddha talks about how he felt being alone in the woods before he was in our hunt before he was enlightened and after he was enlightened so just to we're not going to go too much I mean, this is a big sutta so we're not going to go too much into it but I just want to read some parts but master Gotama remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest are hard to endure Seclusion is hard to practice, <clears throat> and it is hard to enjoy solitude. One would think jungles must rob a bhikkhu of his mind if he has no concentration. And the Buddha is saying, before he was enlightened, he thought the same thing. And he talks about fear. Fear and being out alone in the woods. And in the Metta Sutta, the, uh, the Karanaya Metta Sutta, it starts out by these monks, these bhikkhus, go into the woods, and the spirits want to drive them out. They don't want them in the woods. So they make all these like scary visions, and the bhikkhus run away, and they tell the Buddha, and the Buddha says, go back and give Metta. And they went back and they gave metta. So this weekend, 
I did one of my favorite things, um, and that's going to Vermont, going camping out in the woods, um, and enjoying life. You know, I'm either <laughs> if I leave New Jersey, if I if I leave work, it's either to go to the monastery in West Virginia or to go to Vermont and enjoy <laughs> and enjoy the nature. So, you know, like most people, um, I started out in the in the woods in tents. But in the last five years or so, four or five years, since I've really gotten into Buddhism, I started to face my fears. Facing fears is a big thing in Buddhism. As a matter of fact, there's a, um, a book, I believe. I have it, and I've never read it yet. It's part of my Buddhist library, but I have to read it. And it's by a... Um, a famous female, I guess you would say bhikkhuni, I'm, but uh, I'm not sure what you would call it, a female monk in the Tibetan um, tradition. And it's called The Things That Scare Us. So if you uh, are, have read that or haven't read that yet, I suggest it. I've heard it's very, very good. I haven't yet read it. I have so many. Every time I go to a monastery or a place, I get, ooh, I like this book, I like this book. <laughs> And there's so many books I haven't gotten to read them all. But, uh, <clears throat> so, basically, like I was saying, I started out and I wanted to face my fear. And at the, at the same time I heard this, this, the quote, a wonderful quote, do something that scares you every day which I also try to do. So I, I, doing that quote and observing my mind through situations of fear, I gradually, and also through practice, fear started to abate for certain things. Now I'll tell you a little bit of a history of fear when it comes to me. When I was a kid, I was not afraid of zombies. I was not afraid of vampires. I was not afraid of werewolves. I was not afraid of Satan. <laughs> you know, growing up a Catholic, you know, ooh, Satan and hell and all that. I was not afraid of any of that. But I had one deathly fear that as a nine year old kept me up at night till three o'clock in the morning and basically <laughs> killed the night and killed sleeping for me for a long time. Anybody want to guess? No? Oh, what are you going to say, Fizz? Clowns? No! <laughs> nope. Nope, not clowns. I'll tell you. I have a very literal mind. So this kind of makes perfect sense for me. Aliens. Gray aliens. The ones with the big pear-shaped heads and the big black eyes. Big time. As a matter of fact, in all honesty, when I see a picture of them, I still have fear. But you know what I do now? I give meta to them. <laughs> so I give meta to the aliens. But uh, these aliens, you know, and I would have like really, really horrible dreams. You know, <clears throat> a lot of my experiences, you could probably say, like some people say, oh, I had these dreams and I have these markings and I must have been abducted or whatever. I don't know if, uh, I actually have an alien avatar as well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you want to wear it, I don't care. <laughs> but, um, so, you know, this is something where, to the point where I was so scared and I was scared of having these dreams of the aliens coming for me and, and all of this stuff. As like a 10 year old kid, I said, you know, to my mom, you know, is there a prayer or something that so that you stop dreaming? And I started saying this prayer. I thought it was like a prayer, but it was something my mom made up. And basically, as now that I'm older, I realized that the prayer was basically me training my mind not to dream. And now that I'm older, it kind of sucks because I want to dream. I want to like, you know, let my mind dream, but I don't. I maybe have four dreams a year that I can remember. They say you dream, 
you know, um, and you don't remember, I don't know, <clears throat> but I don't remember dreams, maybe four times a year, that's about it, and that comes from, you know, that, that crazy fear, I mean, this is, you know, I've never been afraid of anything in my life like I was afraid of, of those aliens, um, and, you know, it took me until adult life to really get over, like, the, the fear of, like, sleeping without a TV. Like, now I can sleep in, in darkness. It's beautiful. I like quiet, darkness, sleeping. But before, I, I mean, it, probably up until f three years ago, I always slept with a TV on. You know, and this is, these are things that fears drive us to do. I mean, fears can make us do some crazy, crazy stuff. So anyway, coming back to the future, this weekend I'm in Vermont, and where I go, it's um, about a mile outside of a small town called Danby, Vermont, uh, and the town has about maybe 500 people, there's the nearest hospitals 40 miles away, you know, maybe I think one deputy for however many miles it's one of those you know real real remote kind of places which I like <laughs> and um, so it's a it's a wilderness property about a mile and a half you know outside of town and so I go there I have my own little campsite by a stream and I set up my lean-to for those of you who don't know what a lean-to is basically it's a structure that covers the top of you in case it rains you're wide open in the woods. So that night, I go to sleep. You know, I have I said I have a fire going. I go to sleep, and actually, for those interested, because I do these kind of silly things to show the people, uh, my family and friends, how nutty I am. There's a short video of me videotaping <laughs> complete darkness other than the fire <laughs> from my uh, from my sleeping bag. So, um, you know, and I was at peace. You know, it, when I first started doing this, I slept in a tent and I was scared. Going down to the tent at night, I'd make sure I'd have my my flashlights on and I'd be worried. Even in the tent, I'd be worried. You know, what was that noise? What was that? What was that? And <clears throat> I think, you know, you've heard me say it, those of you who talk, hear me talk a million times, but you've heard me say it a million times. I honestly think that the practice of meditation helps you to fear less. And I'll talk about why that is. And I'll talk about fear in terms of Buddhism and a little bit as well so you know that night I slept and there was a few uh, a few things where in my mind things started to pop up a little bit but you know what I did when I, I got in my sleeping bag and I was staring at the fire and I immediately started to give metta to all beings within like a 15-20 mile radius so any animals, anything that was in that those woods were with me, I gave metta to. And that, you know, that put me at peace to give metta. And you know what? Evil. <coughs> Even just for a split second, I had a thought in my mind. What if aliens came down the path in the woods towards me while I'm standing here right now? And you know what I did? Exactly what I said before. I said, Metta. I, I, I put a picture of the alien in my face, in my mind, like what we do in a Metta meditation, and I gave Metta to the aliens. <laughs> that was my difficult person, Metta, for the night. <laughs> so, that night was fine. I woke up, no issues. But it was interesting, the next night, I'm out with my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law. You know, these are those of you who know my wife died seven years ago. I still am good friends with her family. We still do things. You know, her, all my nieces and nephews—they're adults now. We like to go out and do things. 
Um, so, you know, this is who I'm with in Vermont. And we're sitting around a fire north of my... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're sitting around the fire um, at a higher elevation where the main area is where they have a camper and stuff like that. And it's about 12.30, 1 in the morning. And what the property, what it is, is <clears throat> it's on one end of a, of a little bit of a valley, a small valley that has a stream going down it. So you go down to the stream and then up about 100, 200 feet on the other end. <clears throat> and we heard this loud, weird, squealing, screeching kind of noise. And we had no idea what it was, but we got up and and keep in mind this is total darkness, you know, except for no no, it wasn't a cat. Trust me, it wasn't a cat. We think that we might know what it is. <clears throat> but um at the time, so we broke out like the spotlights and the flashlights were flashing all around, like trying to figure out what it is, see if we see anything. <laughs> and and uh so we didn't find anything and we're all like wide awake you know i mean you, you sit by the fire you can be kind of nodding off and then something like that happens and boom you're wide awake so we're trying to see if we hear anything else and if you're in the woods you know that you can hear an, a sound and nine times out of ten you'll never hear that sound again for the rest of the night you think like oh maybe i can hear it again you won't hear it again but uh I mean, unless it's a Bigfoot or something that's stalking you. I don't know. <laughs> but nine times out of ten, you won't hear it again. So, you know, it came to like one o'clock-ish or whatever. And, you know, uh, me and my brother-in-law went down to my campsite just to um, to check out things. And and my brother was like, you know, if you want to, you can sleep in with us tonight. Um, and I guess he kind of gave me the the option to but I think he obviously had concern for me sleeping out and you know wide open when there's all you know who knows I mean the area has bears the area has all kinds of creatures um but you know up until that night I had no issues you know if something passed me in the night and I was asleep well I don't know I woke up it didn't eat me <laughs> so I was okay so you know what, I decided, I, I thought about it back and forth, and I was thinking, and I was like, well, is fear pushing me to go into the, into the camper, or is it common sense? <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, fear or common sense, fear or common sense? And I thought to myself, ah, hell, I'll just sleep in the camper. So anyway, this morning, uh, skip ahead a couple days, I, um, my brother-in-law says he talked to some of the locals and they think that, oh, the, well, you know what, if it was just aliens, I would have been like, eh, you know, they can come for me, I'll give them meth, I'll just hang out, but I mean, I, th I was thought to myself, well, if there are creatures, I mean, it could have been a creature that got killed by an even bigger creature, who the hell knows what's out there, you know, um, <clears throat> but I found out that apparently what it most likely is, is a pack of wild koi dogs which are apparently hybrids of coyotes and dogs. And I looked up some of the pictures of these things, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, maybe it was a good thing that I slept inside. <laughs> I mean, who knows, but uh, I can just imagine a pack of these wild dogs roaming around while I'm... Uh, anybody ever see um, the movie The Grey with Liam Neeson yet? With the wolves that track him down and stuff like that? I, I pictured my after I found out about the koi dogs I pictured myself uh, like Liam Neeson in, in the end surrounded by the walls <laughs> and I thought yeah, you know maybe that's a good thing that I didn't sleep out there that night but you know what in all actuality I know that almost all animals are afraid of humans they will not go towards a human they'll not go towards fire so really nine times out of ten I would have been fine out there if I slept out there but the fear and the things were in my mind in my mind rolling around in my mind making me do second guessing second guessing and 
I just, I don't know. I either gave into fear or common sense. I don't know. Yeah, and that that that's definitely what it could have been. It was a loud screeching, squealing noise that I've never heard before. It's really weird. So, you know, people, I think, are afraid if they are to say that they're afraid of the dark. The darkness is such a ingrained fear of all of us that, but these days, like, you know, you're supposed to think that, oh, only kids are afraid of the dark. You know, I'm not afraid of the dark. But, you know, I, I you know, I was able to admit, yeah, I'm afraid of the dark. And I'm able to say, you know, sometimes I still am. But for the most part, I'm pretty good in the dark. I like, I almost imagine myself to be Batman. <laughs> or some, I am part of the darkness, you know. Um, watch, uh, watch Batman Begins and listen to the part where they're talking about becoming one with the dark. <laughs> or becoming one with your fear. That's a good, good part. Because it's very, very true. There's nothing wrong with being afraid of the dark. There's nothing wrong with... We, people, we are afraid of much sillier things these days than the dark. Back in the day, 100, 200 years ago, the darkness was, was something to really be afraid of. <laughs> these days we have electricity and we take darkness, you know, we take light for granted. But, um... So where was I going? So yeah, so we have this the darkness. Now there's another type of, of fear as well. One of the things that I've been doing, you know, for those of you who know heard me talk, you know, I had weight loss surgery almost about two years ago now. Um, I've become a little bit of a health nut and trying all kinds of crazy things. I've done skydiving and all, you know, I've becoming one of these like adrenaline nutty kind of people and doing all this like, you know, I do kung fu, I do all kinds of stuff. So, I decided to, you know, the proverbial, there's a, a tree that fall, fell across the stream. Of course, what are you going to do? You're going to climb, you're going to balance on the tree to go across the stream. Well, most of my life, I couldn't do that. So, I decided, hell, you know, my balance is good. I do yoga, I do kung fu, my, you know, I'm practicing parkour now, doing all kinds of stuff. And <clears throat> so, I'm going to balance over that tree. And lo and behold, I did it two times, right? No fear. No, now, this is a, a pretty small tree over a stream filled with large boulders. And it's about five foot high over the stream. No fear, twice. Back and forth. Total mindfulness in the moment. Total concentration. Boom. Like it was nothing. I go a third time. I decide to go further. Further on, there's all kinds of branches and stuff. I start fiddling with the branches. All of a sudden, I'm falling. I basically, I'm holding onto one of the branches. I flip, fall under the tree, land on my back in the stream. I smack my shoulder onto a, a boulder. And by the way, there's still a huge bruise and it still hurts three days later. And I smacked my head onto a boulder. And my head, I had the, I had the Looney Tunes bruise, you know. <laughs> you know, my, uh, my sister-in-law, my, my niece, uh, thankfully, knows I do stupid crap like that. So, <laughs> so she heard a splash and she's like, oh, you know. Joe must be uh, trying to do the thing. He must have fell. So she came, you know, over, and everybody, you know, came over. I was okay. I was checking myself to see if I hurt myself. It was so quick that, you know, I just found myself basically on my back, sopping wet in the stream. And long story short, I'm fine. You know, I I, I iced myself, no issues, no concussion or anything like that. But, you know what I did? Half hour later, I said to myself, it's time to conquer the fear. And you know what came into my mind? Again, from Batman Begins, in the beginning, when Bruce falls, and the father goes, why do we fall, Bruce? So we can learn to pick ourselves back up. 
So you know what I did? I got back on that log. And you know what happened? I was scared crapless. <laughs> Two times I had done that log with no effort, no fear, like it was nothing. That time I got on after I fell, it was almost like instead of it being five foot over a stream, it was over a 4,000 foot chasm. <clears throat> As I put my hand, my, my uh, foot from one to the other, my feet were shaking. Shaking. And you know what, you know what happened? I wasn't in the moment at all. I, before, when I was, my eyes were like, kind of like in walking meditation where you put your eyes down to the ground a couple feet ahead where you're walking. Before, I, I realized, I didn't realize I was doing that, but when I was, now I realize I was doing that. I was almost walking meditation on that branch, on that tree. And this time, I had no, no mindfulness whatsoever. All I had was fear. My mind was fear clouded by fear and all I <clears throat> was thinking about was I was trying to do step by step but I was thinking you know I'm wobbling now I'm going to fall so I got about maybe halfway <clears throat> and before where I was able to fairly easily turn direction I didn't go from one end and then get off and then start the the two times I I in the middle of the branch in the middle of the stream I turned direction which now I real I wonder how the heck I even did it but that's the power of mindfulness when you don't have any fear when you have complete mindfulness that is the power of mindfulness so turning around I'm shaking I'm, I'm, I'm wobbling I'm, I'm feeling like I'm gonna fall off again and then I speedily got off. <laughs> so, but you know what though? That taught me right there. That is how powerful fear is. How powerful fear can be in destroying our lives. In controlling our lives. And it doesn't, it's not even a fear of falling and cracking your skull because you were lucky that you didn't do it the first time <laughs> and you, people <clears throat> we fear so many things of course those of you who heard me talk you know where I'm going with this <laughs> fear where does fear come from fear comes from attachment and aversion fear with related to attachment we have we like this thing it's pleasing to us we want it eclipsing no worry people can come and go anytime so we have this we have this attraction we want this thing and what do we fear we fear losing it we fear being separated from it we fear it changing aversion aversion would be we like our life. We don't want to fall and crack our skull. So, version, uh, <laughs> we have fears because we don't want to. We don't want to have something happen that's displeasing to us. We don't want to fall. We don't want to do. <clears throat> um, we don't want to have people, um, you know, around us that we don't want you know to be around. We don't want to um, have events happen that we don't want to deal with. That's fear. Well, I would say one thing. I would never call a phobia stupid. Because what are you doing? What do I always say about meditation? Come on, evil. You've been, you've been listening to me so much, you know. When you meditate, what do you do? When you're observing, what do you not do when you observe? Don't get attached to it, but you don't judge. You look at it objectively, right? When you say stupid phobia, <coughs> you're judging it. You're judging a a condition 
that has causes. That's all you're doing. <laughs> so it's just like when I started out in meditation and I got mad at myself because I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that, I was judging it. Now, when you don't judge it, you know, and you work on it, and you meditate, and you observe it, <clears throat> what I was doing, you know what, in all honesty, even though when I was on that log the third time, even though I didn't have mindfulness, I was still observing. Not at a deep level, perhaps, because the mindfulness wasn't there, but I was observing. I, th I was thinking to myself, wow, it's totally different experience now with fear. I was thinking to myself how much fear controlled me. And uh, speaking of which, while uh, I videotape myself going across that too, by the way, the first two times, I videotaped the first. Uh, <laughs> there's the link. I uh, I first time the my camera or my phone is attached to my belt so you see it almost in a first person thing you see my feet going across the second time I have it in my hand as I'm balancing so you see me balancing you see my eyes I'm looking down you see I'm in a meditative state basically I'm just doing it after that there was no meditative state I was still experiencing it yes and like yeah uh, Kyrie, that's um, it's interesting because uh, I talked about this in a in a forum, a, a exercise forum, um, about fear and stuff like that. And people said that basically there's a person who had fallen off a motorcycle, a person who had fallen off a bike, a motor, um, uh, a horse, and stuff like that. That that is very similar. It's fear. We don't. We obviously fear pain. We fear damaging this body that we consider to be us. But the Arahants, they know that this body is not us. So there is no us, there is no me to fear. Right? Of course, I doubt you're going to see Arahants doing death-defying stunts either. But... <laughs> So if if there's no me, then why do I? Then there's no me to do death-defying stunts. There's no ego for me to want to do something like that. There's no ego for me to to say I want to test out my balance, and to go over the the log. <laughs> but okay. So <clears throat> now that we've gone through my two stories. We can discuss uh, fear a little bit more specific to Buddhism um, and integrate the two stories. So, good job, Kyrie. You, you know when I did that, Kyrie? When I was having a root canal, I attempted to do that <laughs> to meditate, <laughs> and uh, it, it worked pretty decently sometimes, not so decent the other. Yeah. Very good. That's good practice. You know, even if it didn't work, even if uh, you did wince or scream, you still practice it, that's still observing experience, and that's still, uh, you know, that's still the practice, that's good. Fizz, I've only ever been on an ATV once. Um, I love the things, by the way. <laughs> but uh, I, I've been on well once by myself. I've taken an ATV, and it was in Vermont. And I was in the middle of on this property, um, and I didn't flip it, but I did something, and it wouldn't start. So it was. So I'm in the middle of these woods on this like hundred acre property. It's getting dark, and I can't start this stupid thing. I'm like you know pushing down, like trying to choke it, do all whatever. And so thankfully, my brother-in-law is smart, <laughs> and his family. So they're like, 
Joe's not back by now. We're going to go look for him. So my brother-in-law found me. And basically, I thought it was like a motorcycle where you had to like put your foot down. All it was was that you had to get under it and pull your foot up. <laughs> so I'm sitting out there for 40 minutes lost trying to figure, you know, get this thing going. And it was just such a, a simple thing. But uh, that's another experience. Like, okay, it's getting dark. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm kind of lost. <laughs> you know, what's going to happen? So, thankfully, my brother-in-law found me. But those, I, you can definitely, especially on rough terrain, if you don't know what you're doing, you can definitely hurt yourself on those. And you don't even have to go fast. Wow, Kyrie. Huh? Hello? Whoa. Hello? Hello?